we have discussed the hair follicle disorders that is androgenic alopecia alopecia areata trichotillomania telogenic fluvium tinea capitis but this is hair shaft disorder agar aapke scores improve kar gaye so then you know your treatment is going to work and you can give the patient a little more confidence trichoscopy is basically a method of using the dermatoscope or a trichoscope in our clinic to diagnose the problems of hair fall instantly without going towards biopsy and without going uh, for the special blood testing and the other labs it basically bridges the gap between your clinical judgment and the invasive testing you will be able to identify the role and existence of trichoscopy in general and obviously identify different hair disorders in particular and differentiate them from one assalamu alaikum everyone this is dr aisha gyas and today the talk is going to be about trichoscopy because till now we discussed everything related to the skin problems being diagnosed using dermoscopy but we didn't talk about hair disorders that can be confidently diagnosed if we use trichoscopy routinely in our practice so today we are going to talk about trichoscopy its significance in a dermatological clinic so let's begin the talk because every day in our clinic we come across such patients who are having diffuse kind of alopecia where nothing is very specific specifically uh, i mean pointing towards diagnosis for example there is no single patch of alopecia the patient is talking or complaining about a diffuse kind of hair loss and you are in a fix if it is a telogen kind of hair loss or if it's a nutritional uh, deficiency disorder leading to the diffuse hair hair fall or if it's a female pattern hair loss or a male pattern hair loss so uh, if you uh, use this trichoscopy in your clinic you just put your scope on and instantly you know which kind of alopecia are you dealing with so uh, having said that let's go to the presentation straight away and start talking about alopecias all right so this presentation was basically delivered at islamabad uh, at an hrsp event in uh, sirena Uh, where there were so many dermatologists as well as plastic surgeons and uh, the talk was very successful in fact there many of my colleagues asked me and requested me to record this presentation once again and put it on youtube so that it could be accessible to everyone for use this is my department dermatology department unit to working at ward medical university and uh, i owe all my successes to one of my mentors professor shahbaz aman there who is always uh motivating me to go further and further related to these academic uh achievements okay so these are my mentors i always i always acknowledge them at the start of my presentations uh mentors like iris zelautek ashfa k margo emilio slalas kipia kenziano and of course professor shahbaz aman and professor tahir jameel ahmed so why trichoscopy so trichoscopy is basically a method of using the dermatoscope or a trichoscope in our clinic to diagnose the problems of hair fall instantly without going towards biopsy and without going uh, for the special blood testing and the other labs it basically bridges the gap between your clinical judgment and the invasive testing so you can always bridge that gap where you feel you are deficient in your clinic just by putting the scope on and there you go for example there are 1000 plus causes of hair loss when you come across a patient in your clinic some of them belong to med medical problems metabolic disorders they could be infectious diseases psychiatric problems and other hair specific disorders but then you don't know where to start how to start with i mean you can take a long history you can examine the scalp you can also order blood testing but if you do not do trichoscopy in a patient of hair fall trust me you are at a loss so in all those uh, causes of hair loss if you want to put yourself at ease regarding the diagnosis you can uh, just put your scope on and diagnose the hair problems instantly the term was basically diagnosed uh, uh, the term was basically coined in 2006 it started with this paper and uh, then it went on and on and then there were so many inventions and so many discoveries related to trichoscopy there are so many soft uh, um, i mean uh, the the applications 
and the softwares that are in use related to trichoscopy related to the uh, reporting of the hair disorders where you just put the picture that you take with the use of trichoscope into that software and then it comes up with a proper reporting system that is the caliber of the hair the number of the hair and we we'll just touch that thing shortly so the uh, the significance of trichoscopy is not only the clinical dermatopathological correlation which i always mention in my talks it's diagnostic obviously you can monitor a problem a disease with the help of trichoscopy at various intervals during your treatment and obviously it's a resource saving technique the specific learning objectives of today's uh, presentation would be that you will be able to identify the role and existence of trichoscopy in general and obviously identify different hair disorders in particular and differentiate them from one another okay so let's see the normal hair when you see the normal hair with the help of trichoscope you see these hair follicle units not always the single hair is coming out of the follicle unit and as dermatologists we all know that there may be two to three hair coming from the same orifice from the same hair follicle unit that's why they are called follicular unit unit is one but there may be many hair coming out of it like as you can see in this picture all the hair are of similar caliber they are all of similar thickness but there is a, obviously a particular distance between the hair follicular units and you are unable to see any empty follicles over here so this is the picture of normal hair that you can see with your trichoscopy and you can obviously report that thing with the help of your pen and paper uh, you can you know report it in black and white that what is the count of hair that you saw in this particular window the, there is always a calibration in that trichoscope and whenever you are capturing a picture there is a calibration over there so you particularly know uh, how much area have you captured in that photo for example a 2 mm area or a 3 mm area belongs to the problem in question which you are talking about and usually we talk about 1 cm square area whenever we you know talk in terms of hair count and the number of hair follicles it's the 1 cm square area that is being studied with the help of trichoscopy and its difference is very important if you do research on uh, um, different hair follicle disorders and you use this trichoscopy in that uh, research you are referring to that area that you studied with the help of trichoscope so obviously you are going to monitor the disease if you are i mean uh, interventioning with some sort of drug and you are uh, actually witnessing its results on to that hair fall problem or for that matter you are just following up the patient you will be referring again and again back to that 1 cm square area at that specific point on the scalp that you uh, used in the first place so uh, you can on not only talk about the count of hair their thickness hair per unit uh, per follicle unit you can talk about the skin in general for example as you can see in between the hair follicular units the skin is pretty much normal it's light yellow colors there is no scaling no pigmentation no blood vessels visible so you can uh, report that thing up and obviously you talk in terms of blood vessels so these things are very important for example a resident comes to me and i ask him or i assign him the duty of trichoscopy of a particular patient and i ask him to write down a report usually the residents are in a fix where to start from what to write in that report how to end that report which should be what should be the components of that trichoscopy report and these things are the ones that usually demand a little bit of uh, Uh, concern and uh, a little bit of time of consultant to make them understand that particularly and i'll touch it in a minute that what exactly needs to be written in a trichoscopy report so uh, we usually uh, do not know the stats of hair in our population we are usually referring to the stats that are given in the international studies so um, for the matter of ease i must tell you that the number of hair might be different in different areas of the scalp for example vertex frontal temporal parietal occipital <clears throat> if the number of the hair follicle units is low it would be about 120 per cm square and if it is average it would be around 160 and the higher number which usually is a very uh, i mean healthy scalp will contain about 200 follicular units per square cm and uh, in 0.053 this is the thickness mean thickness of the hair 
that is uh, that your scalp is having and uh, 0.050 mm is the thickness of the uh, hair on in the occipital area and 0.053 mm is the thickness of hair on the vertex so these stats have been derived from international <coughs> international studies and uh, we are working on it uh, at our level in our population so that we can come up with our own stats face washes when i'm talking about face washes it really is a serious matter so the major differences between the soap and face washes let me summarize for you now um, uh, moving forward towards the debate for cleanser versus face wash you need to know the skin types once you know the skin types you can choose the face washes better suited for those skin types so which uh, which equipment do you really need to go for trichoscopy the traditional the ordinary the usual dermatoscope that you're having with you can work like a trichoscope you just have to put it on scalp and see for hair in particular so what do you see basically whenever you put your trichoscope on the scalp you should have four things in mind what are you looking for number 1 you're looking for the hair in general and all the parameters of hair in particular for example the number of hair the number of hair follicular unit and the thickness of the hair the texture of the hair if it's broken or if it's having special diagnostic features like maybe exclamation mark hair or a flame hair or for that matter the other things which we will shortly talk about you are obviously going to look for blood vessels this is something which is very important and usually residents tend to forget about it so the blood vessels are very important whenever you are writing down a trichoscopy report or you are looking for some diagnosis in the hair disorders you have to particularly pay your attention towards the presence or absence of any blood vessels in your field all right the skin uh, this is the right lower corner picture the skin in general if it's if there is a scaling on the skin ya skin ka color kharab hai or if there is any other disorder that you can look for over there and the right left corner the uh, follicular uh, the dots the follicular dots it may be of different colors yellow dots white dots okay so the dots are very important the, the empty follicular units also give you false appearance of yellow dots over there so they may signify many types of hair disorders which we'll talk about and uh, so the um, the dots are very much important follicular dots in your field of vision while you are doing trichoscopy so these four things are very important keep them in mind and you are going to write a perfect report on trichoscopy all right with the help of trichoscopy you do not only identify the hair follicle disorders that means the disorders of hair fall that we usually see but you can also identify certain hair shaft disorders today's presentation is about different types of alopecia so we will be particularly talking about hair shaft disorder uh, hair follicle disorders but not the hair shaft disorders okay so having said all these things about trichoscopy its significance how are you going down to write down the report of trichoscopy what are you actually looking for when you put your scope on now let's straight away jump into the different kinds of alopecias and their diagnostic uh, points on trichoscopy no, okay so starting with the commonest type of alopecia that we come across in our practice which is an androgenic sort of alopecia what are the diagnostic features on trichoscopy so as you have gone through the text in androgenic alopecia or male pattern hair loss there obviously is a miniaturization of the hair follicle and the conversion of the terminal hair to the villus hair this is the pathogenesis of androgenic hair fall and this is the miniaturized hair that you see on the trichoscopy well on the left hand side is you can see the trichoscopy of the androgenic hair loss androgenic alopecia and as you if you clearly see if you see with a little bit of uh, uh, with a little bit of more focus you can see that there is different caliber of different hair follicles some of them have gone through the miniaturization process and there are kind of very thin while others are of middle caliber and some of them are quite thick so there are different calibers in this trichoscopic picture and as uh, uh, i must mention over here that the hair growth 
and the miniaturization they are running in parallel they are not synchronized here growth is running at its own pace in a scale and here fall or miniaturization process is running at its own pace so you get to see all types of hair calibers in a trichoscopic picture of androgenic alopecia they i have uh, symbolized this with the picture of the trees in the um, on the mountain side you can see different caliber of trees the thinner ones the middle thickness and the thicker ones so this is just to make you memorize the picture so that whenever in clinical practice you forget the androgenic alopecia trichoscopic um, uh, trichoscopic changes or the trichoscopic markers you just think about uh, this uh, picture of the trees and there you go there you know that the different caliber of hair was the main thing this is called heterogeneity of the hair thickness so heterogeneity in the hair thickness is the diagnostic marker on trichoscopy for androgenic alopecia all right so hair shaft heterogeneity in androgenic alopecia as i just talked about it and i also have told you about human hair growth and hair miniaturization since they are not coordinated so you get to see thin and intermediate thickness and the thicker hair all at one place i have made this picture this chromatic uh, diagrammatic picture for you guys to understand that normally there are two to three uh, hair coming out from the same hair follicle and in androgenic alopecia you get to see maybe single hair or two hair coming out from the follicles if you want me to to refer back to the picture of androgenic uh, alopecia on trichoscopy i can always refer back as you can see over here there is uh, the two hair coming out from the same follicle one of them is a miniaturized one and another one is a, a, a thinner one not miniaturized but quite thin over here you get to see normal caliber hair two hair coming out from the same follicle and over here also one hair follicle one hair per follicle one hair per follicle one hair per follicle one hair per follicle so in androgenic alopecia the number of the hair per follicle unit decreases and there is also one diagnostic marker i must talk about uh, in androgenic alopecia you get to see a couple of hair coming out from the same follicle unit one in that couple is a miniaturized hair and the other one is of Uh, intermediate thickness this is one diagnostic point in androgenic alopecia trichoscopy so coming back to the diagrammatic picture this is also just to make you memorize all right another trichoscopic picture of androgenic alopecia you see that the number of the hair have reduced the number of the hair per follicular unit have also reduced one or two hair at the most are coming from the follicular unit and the thickness varies there is heterogeneity in the thickness of the hair shaft and this is diagnostic for androgenic alopecia the naked eye presentation as you may see on the left side of two lesions appears almost the same clinically but when you go up for the dermoscopy on the right side as you can see in the upper lesion you may see the pigmented network and the network is kind of a regular one dispersed throughout the lesion however in the lesion uh lower below in the lower picture on the right side you may see these isolated dots and clots in the periphery of the lesion all right so when you are giving some treatment and you are uh, i mean you want to see the response of their treatment on the hair growth in terms of hair growth in androgenic alopecia the increase in the number of hair per follicular unit is one of the first signs to see in female androgenic alopecia once you are giving some treatment this is a positive predictive factor with any sort of treatment for example over here units with one hair are almost 50% in a field of vision or in a field of view but once you follow the patient after the treatment maybe after 3 to 4 months units with one hair are 0% there is no hair follicular unit from which oh, one hair is coming out and but there are minimum two so we can say that this has got a positive predictive value and that means the increase in the number of hair per follicular unit follicular units are the same four on left side four on right side but the number of hair have increased so this is a good a positive predictive factor all right coming on to the second disease uh this is alopecia areata a patch of hair loss clinically we can diagnose it instantly 
इसमें कोई हाई फाई साइंस नहीं है कोई कंफ्यूजन नहीं है बट वंस एलोपेशिया एरिया इज डिफ्यूज सॉर्ट ऑफ इट डज नॉट हैव अ पैची हेयर लॉस देन द प्रॉब्लम बिगेन्स देन यू हैव टू रियली थिंक अबाउट इट सो आई वॉन्ट यू टू सी दिस एक्सक्लेमेशन मार्क ब्लिंकिंग राइट इन फ्रंट ऑफ योर आईज This exclamation mark is diagnostic feature of alopecia areata on trichoscopy and we'll shortly see how does it look like on trichoscopy so this was one of my patients who presented to me with this diffuse kind of hair loss on the frontal scalp so when i uh, the, the differentials clinical differentials were like it might be telogen it might be trichotillomania or it could be uh, some metabolic disorder or it could be alopecia areata but then once i did this trichoscopy as you can see there are exclamation mark here now what is an exclamation mark here referring back to our beautiful exclamation mark the the thickness is more on the distal end while the thickness is uh, getting reduced once you get proximal to the scalp somewhere near the scalp you get to see nothing and it seems as if there is a gap in the length of the hair uh, and then there is a little bit of uh, hair follicle uh, dot which is visible just above the scalp so this is the exclamation mark and these details are pretty much visible over here on trichoscopy as for example look at this hair the distal part is thicker the proximal part is thinner and somewhere near the scalp the hair almost disappears these hair are small and uh, these might be regrowing hairs or these might be the miniaturized hair as a result of autoimmune process and uh, the decrease in the caliber of the hair because this is an autoimmune disease alopecia areata and the inflammation is attacking right at the hair follicle another exclamation mark here over here i don't know if my cursor is visible to you okay now it's visible so this is the another exclamation mark here one more exclamation mark here another exclamation mark here so so these are all the exclamation mark here and they are diagnostic for alopecia areata once you put your scope there you know you are dealing with alopecia areata now your treatment is going to be quite customized and specific and you probably are going to offer her intralesional injections of trimcinolon which otherwise you would not dare to you know all right the same patient after third uh, injection of uh, trimcinolon and uh, you can see that the hair growth is markedly improved she is having uh, you know a good the hair volume over here now on the frontal scalp and the plan obviously is to continue with intralesionals okay so trichoscopy for alopecia areata as i told you is exclamation mark here the black dots where the hair have actually fallen off from the scalp leaving behind this black dot where the residual hair is stuck in the scalp in the uh, place where there was original hair follicle and you get to see just the black dot while looking on the uh, scalp from top and then some of the hair might not be visible totally in your field of vision and you see the thicker hair distal distally and the thinner hair proximally these are called tapered hair they are not called exclamation mark hair you can only label a hair as exclamation mark hair if it is visible completely in your field of vision if it's not you call it a tapered hair and then pole pinkus constrictions pole pinkus con constrictions are the constrictions visible in the middle of the hair shaft in uh, alopecia areata where some improvement is has taken place probably you have given some treatment or naturally as a natural course of the disease patient is on improvement and the hair has started growing in caliber so you get to see the thicker caliber near the scalp thinner in the middle and then again the thicker caliber distally these are the paul pinkus constrictions so all of these features are diagnostic for alopecia areata numerous black dots in trichoscopic field are almost diagnostic for alopecia areata so another confident thing that i have given to you today is that numerous black dots in trichoscopic field are almost diagnostic i am reading it again and again just to uh, emphasize it see this picture 
this was a case of alopecia areata where you get to see all these black dots these black dots are the residual hair that are left in the hair follicles after the the, the, the distal hair has fallen off and as you can see the follicle hair follicle still contains the root of the hair stuck in here but from top it is already broken off and with the help of trichoscopy you see just the black dot as you can see over here as well so all the features of uh, alopecia areata summed up in this picture four pictures actually uh, on the top left side you can see these yellow dots and the empty follicles okay right upper end you see the uh, miniaturized hair the small caliber hair they are of similar thickness they are all thin and they are all under the process of uh, Uh, being attacked by autoimmune disease the inflammation the constriction of the hair just close to the scalp on the uh, the lower right side and there is a black dot left where the hair has fallen off this is the constricted hair and we'll call it a tapered hair because all of the hair is not visible in our vision field of vision so this is the then complete hair we can see so we'll call it a tapered hair and over here the black dots that are the broken hair from the scalp and in between you can see all these vellus here that are left behind probably they are also going to fall off in some time so these are the different features of alopecia areata that you can see on trichoscopy not always you get to see the similar trichoscopic picture but since the diagnostic features are so many since the disease is uh, sort of dynamic you may catch the patient at any stage uh, you may catch the patient at a earlier stage where the autoimmune destruction has just begun you may take the pictures at the um, uh, where the uh, disease is at a plateau already where the major destruction has already taken place so all the features of alopecia areata could be visible in that picture or you may capture the picture at a stage where the autoimmune destruction has uh, probably um, at its minimum is at its minimum or some treatment has been started and the patient is on improvement or the disease has gone into remission so there are different uh, diagnostic features there are different um, uh, different trichoscopic uh, diagnostic points that you get to see in a picture so you should not always <clears throat> uh fix up your mind that uh, alopecia areata would be like this alopecia areata would be like this so i have shown you all the variations in the trichoscopy of alopecia areata if you see have the history and the clinical disease in favor of alopecia areata and you get to see these yellow dots which are empty hair follicles obviously the diagnosis will be strengthened similarly if you get to see this trichoscopic picture and clinically all the history and the clinical picture goes in favor of alopecia areata so you label it as alopecia areata uh, not always the trichoscopic pictures can alone be confidently made a basis of diagnosis you always have to relate them to clinical pictures clinically to the patient and also to the history that's why we call clinico dermoscopico pathological correlation sometimes we really order biopsies after trichoscopic sometimes we can avoid the need of biopsies so this is clinical dermoscopic or pathological correlation cdpc and this is not the i mean you cannot you know uh, diagnose a hair follicle disorder just based on trichoscopic picture always what's a pattern and what is a clue so pattern is something is a structure that you see in more than 20% of that field which you are seeing with the dermoscope or the field of the dermoscope so more than 20% if you see something it's a pattern and if less than 20% is a clue yes pattern and clue so pattern is more than 20% and clue is less than 20% okay so as for example in the left hand side you see that the pigment network is present in more than 20% of the lesional uh, of the surface area that you uh, are seeing with the dermoscope and we call it a pattern so there is a pattern of pigment network however on the right hand side if you see this clod is it a pattern or a clue it's a clue <clears throat> okay so there is also a scoring system that has been devised based on trichoscopy of alopecia areata 
and uh, it takes into account all the parameters that we just talked about for example the exclamation mark here tapered here black dot and the broken here and all these parameters are given minus one mark while the positive thing like the upright regrowing here that might be visible in a trichoscopic picture and the pigtail here are given plus one marks now what are the pigtail hairs and what are the upright regrowing hairs this is your homework whenever i'm presenting some talk i usually Mm, leave some empty spaces i usually uh, i mean uh, leave you with some uh, mind evoking or provoking questions and some things to do at home some homework like things because i always believe that uh, spoon feeding cannot always help in in learning process so whenever i'm taking class of undergrad students or post grad students i always leave them with some questions i cannot spoon feed everything so it would be a good idea if you uh, read about upright regrowing hair their features on trichoscopy and also the pigtail hairs and you write about uh, write the answers in the comments section down below and let me know if you are uh, thinking on the right track or not it would be really good and i'll feel positive about it if any one of you listening to my talk talks in you know talks about it the pigtail hair and the upright regrowing hair okay so we were talking about the uh, predictive score so you score the alopecia areata trichoscopic picture based on these parameters you give minus 1 to all these features and plus 1 to all these and then the final score is calculated once you have calculated the score at the start uh, where the patient presented to you then you follow up your patient after a couple of months you have started the treatment it's really very easy to uh, score the patient based on this scoring system once again and then it's an objective way of documenting the treatment response and obviously we scientists are running behind the objectiveness of our responses clinical responses this is the only thing that we can uh, base our research on so before treatment has no predictive value for regrowth and once you calculate the scores after 2 months of treatment you can predict this treatment can is going to work or this treatment is not going to work for that patient all right so let me share yet a predictive scores after 2 months of treatment इसमें आपने यही वाली स्कोरिंग सिस्टम के साथ उसको रिकॉर्ड कर लिया और अगर आपके स्कोर्स इंप्रूव कर गए तो देन यू नो कि योर ट्रीटमेंट इज गोइंग टू वर्क एंड यू कैन गिव द पेशेंट अ लिटिल मोर कॉन्फिडेंस दैट सी दिस वाज योर स्कोर एट द स्टार्ट एंड नाउ योर स्कोर हैज रिड्यूस्ड और इम्प्रूवड एंड प्रोबेबली आर ट्रीटमेंट इज वर्किंग सो इफ द एलोबेशिया प्रिडिक्टिव स्कोर इज टू there are 98% chances of hair regrowth on the current therapy with the which the put the patient on if the score is 1 there are 89% chances if the score is 0 only 13% chances of hair regrowth are there on your current treatment minus 1 says there are only 2% chances of current therapy Minus two, minus three, minus four. Obviously, less than one percent. So you probably have to change your treatment if you belong to these red tiles. Zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So this is one of the objective ways of documenting. So the remitting phase of alopecia areata, where the hair growth has already begun on your treatment, you get to see these regrowing hair. Regrowing hair are small upright hair that are not thicker distally. lone exclamation mark here the lone exclamation mark here marked over here with the black arrow and then villus here it mixed with the terminal here these are the features of remission phase of alopecia areata on treatment okay so we have talked about two major diseases on trichoscopy their features on trichoscopy one was endogenic alopecia and other one uh, another one was alopecia areata now let's start with the trichoscopic features of trichotillomania very 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 confusing and tricky sort of hair fall most of the times patient and the attendants are not willing to accept the diagnosis and we have to spend really hours and hours uh, making the patient understand the nature of the disease the nature of uh, uh, the the problem and probably the type of the treatment that we offer the patient mm -hmm. patient is not able to understand not willing to accept and it really puts us under pressure this is going to be the chapter 3 of dermoscopy 
and in chapter 3 as i promised earlier we'll be discussing about the chaos and clues method this is one of the dermoscopic methods in diagnosing skin lesions and so similarly a uh, patch of hair loss not always alopecia areata but you suspect because it was uh, it was accessible area on the scalp and probably the history is uh pointing towards the diagnosis so you think maybe this is alopecia areata or it might be trichotillomania some bizarre sort of patches are already there in rest of the scalp so the diagnosis becomes difficult you use your trichoscopy and then you see these broken hair in trichotillomania since there is compulsive desire of patient to pull the hair and then obviously because of that pulling force the hair tend to break at different levels they might get uh, broken at the root of the hair closer to the scalp or they might get broken at different levels so you see the broken hair as you can see on the left hand side the hair are broken there is dispersion of the hair fibers as you can see over here the fuzzy uh, the fuzzy picture and then over here as well the hair fibers are dispersed the hair is broken it's not in single unit there is dispersion of the hair fibers distally and the proximal is a single unit okay so coiled hair so in the process of pulling the hair the hair shaft becomes thinner and thinner and thinner till finally it ruptures and then the proximal left over part coils around itself it's a coiled hair so the coiled hair is a diagnostic feature of trichotillomania there are few more features of trichotillomania for example the flame hair flame hair is just like a flame where the proximal end of the shaft which is uh, close to the scalp is thicker and then distally you see this uh, ash like things uh, this uh, uh, i mean the dispersed uh, distal part of the hair follicle appears like a flame so this is the flame hair okay the v sign v sign is when the two hair are broken the two hair were actually coming out from the same hair follicle and then two of them get broken closer to the scalp this gives you a v sign so v sign is also diagnostic for trichotillomania then tulip hair tulip hair is something the distal part of the hair is darker as compared to the proximal part it seems a little bit thicker as well so this is in the shape of the tulip where you can see a, a a small breach in the middle of the hair shaft and the two corners on the both sides this is something to see with uh, real effort if you can uh, i mean see the middle notch and the corners are a little bit longer than in the middle of the shaft so this gives the false impression of a tulip maybe i'll show you the tulip shortly and this is the hair powder once whole of the hair has been pulled out the mm, uh, leftover parts of the hair are broken some of them are there within the skin of the scalp while some of the they are dispersed outside the scalp and this we call the hair powder these are the broken parts of the hair which are in the form of concretions maybe all right so this is the simulation with the tulip so tulip hair as you can see the distal part of the hair is a little bit thicker and darker darker don't get you know mix it up with the exclamation mark here of alopecia areata they was totally different so this is darker and in a, a little bit rounded and the thickness of the distal part is only in the limited hair shaft and then you see this normal thickenings of the hair shaft rest of the hair shaft is of uh, thinner uh, i mean thickness thinner shaft is there in the proximal area a little bit thicker but globular with rounded edges distally and the color is also darker so this is the definition of the tulip hair okay so we have uh, discussed three diseases trichoscopically and now is the turn for tinea capitis meri jo application hai iska naam hai skin check pro aur jaise ki main aapko ab ye dikha rahi hu ki how does it work 
बेसिकली वेन यू ओपन इट अप तो यहाँ पे राइट right साइड पे आप देख रहे हैं ब्राउज फाइल की ऑप्शन है वंस यू ब्राउज फाइल तो आपके सिस्टम में या फोन में मौजूद पिक्चर्स यू कैन पुट दम आप इन टू दिस एप एंड विद इन अ फ्रैक्शन ऑफ अ सेकेंड दिस कम्स अप विद अ प्रॉपर डायग्नोसिस विद अ डायग्नोसिस एज यू कैन सी ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इज इट हैज डायग्नोज द स्किन लेजन एज मिलेनोसिटिक निवाई विद सिक्सटी एट परसेंट प्रोबेबिलिटी एंड सो दिस वॉज द पेशेंट हु केम टू मी एंड द मदर वॉज लाइक डॉक्टर साहब के पैच बन गया है पिछले एक महीने से एंड इट्स ये वाइट है और ये थोड़ा पाउडरी पाउडरी सा है सो द डिफ्रेंशियल ऑब्वियसली वर सेपरिक टर्माटाइटिस और टीनिया तो उसके बाद जब हमने ट्राइकोस्कोपी की तो हम हैरान रह गए कि ट्राइकोस्कोपी के ऊपर हमें नजर आया ये सो ये क्या था दिस वॉज एन एक्टोथ्रिक्स टाइप ऑफ टीनिया कैपिटिस द स्पोर्स हैव पर्टिकुलरली सराउंडेड दे हैव सराउंडेड द हेयर शेफ फ्रॉम ऑल द साइड्स टू गिव इट अ फॉल्स अपेरेंस ऑफ वाइटिश Uh, I mean white hair. See this hair. The caliber of the hair is thinner, but because of this uh, sleeve-like sheet of ectospores all around the shaft of the hair, it seems as if something is wrapping up this hair. So this was an ectothrix type of hair, tinea uh, capitis. Okay. So another feature, coarse through hair. Coarse through, as uh, you can see in this picture. coarse through hair are also diagnostic for tinea capitis because of the destruction of the hair shaft because of the presence of fungus over there it is coiled like a coarse screw so coarse screw hair is diagnostic for tinea capitis okay so this picture shows many feature of uh, tinea capitis for example the light blue arrow is showing you bent hair the hair is bent over here because of that weakness in the hair shaft because it is being de destroyed uh, by the fungal spores and then block hair the thickness of the hair is the same but a small stud like hair is visible it it is obviously broken and the thickness is uh, the same distally as well as proximally it's darker so it's called the block hair shown by the purple arrow and then broken hair dark blue arrow the broken hair over here and then obviously more scored hair more scoring means that throughout the length of the hair there are different points where the hair appears depigmented just like coding more scoring of something so this is called the more scored hair and this is because of the presence of fungal spores and destruction of the hair the normal color of the hair is not visible uh, at the points of destruction and this is somehow similar to the picture that i showed over here i mean the parts of the hair encircled by the spores if you white appearance as you can see over here two places so this is similar to more spored hair okay and obviously the uh, yellow arrow is showing black dots where the hair has actually fallen off from the scalp so you can see black dots are visible not only in the trichoscopy of uh, tinea capitis they were also visible in trichotillomania they were also visible in alopecia areata but in a trichoscopic picture if you get to see majority of the black dots this was diagnostic for alopecia areata so many features can be found in many diseases but then this is the priority of diagnostic features for example some of the features might be hallmark for some diseases as exclamation mark is a hallmark for alopecia areata diagnosis and black dots if you can see majority of the trichoscopic picture is giving you black dots majority of the hair have fallen off like as giving you the parents giving you the parents of black dots so this would be diagnostic for alopecia areata but if you see only one or two black dots but rest of the feature are in favor of some other disorder so probably you can you know uh, uh, make up your diagnosis like that okay so the another um, hair problem is telogen effluvium telogen might be because of many reasons i'm not going to go into the details but it appears like this sometimes telogen hair loss is pretty much uh, easier to be diagnosed on clinical history and examination but sometimes it's not so when the case is kind of confusing one you don't know whether it is uh, hair loss because of nutritional deficiency hair loss because of female pattern hair loss 
or it's a diffuse case of alopecia areata then you put your scope on and then you get to diagnose this case which is a telogen effluvium so in telogen effluvium there is diffuse uh, thinning of the hair and on trichoscopy you see that the caliber of the hair is the same there is no heterogeneity in the hair shaft the caliber is the same the color is the same so there is no diagnostic feature of alopecia areata black dots are not there so this is the diagnostic picture for telogen effluvium so hair thinning is there in telogen but you have a normal cali uh, a similar caliber there is monotony in the caliber of the hair but in androgenic alopecia obviously uh, if you remember if you do not remember let me memorize it to you that these are smaller caliber hair and these are the thicker caliber hair so you see very thin caliber intermediate caliber and thicker caliber all in one case of androgenic alopecia so that's what we call heterogeneity in the hair shaft and there is no heterogeneity in telogen effluvium all the shafts are of similar thickness so uh, let's touch some of the hair shaft disorders uh, or maybe one or two this is trichorhexis nodosa till now we so my dear fellows i am uh, obviously i have a youtube channel from which i am talking to you right now so i make I usually make videos on skin care and they are meant for the public awareness because they are in the local language and probably this is the uh, only channel in pakistan that is taking care of all the skin matters in the local language easily understandable language for the public to know so you can follow me there on this channel and you can help me make uh, useful videos for the public if i have just missed out anyone and i do have a facebook page as well you can follow me over there Thank you so very much for bearing with me for this time and listening to my presentation. If you have any questions regarding face washes, you can just let me know in the comment section and then I'll be replying you over there as well. Thank you so much. We have discussed the hair follicle disorders that is endogenic alopecia, alopecia areata, trichotillomania, telogen effluvium, tinea capitis, but this is hair shaft disorder which is trichorexis nodosa and we see many cases of trichorexis nodosa in our clinical practice that have used heating devices, uh, you know, the, the hair grooming procedures that they undergo, that the patients undergo lead to breakage of the hair at different levels. This is uh, the breakage of the hair because of traumatic procedures. So this is called trichorexis nodosa, uh, the nodular thickening of the hair somewhere leading to fracture of the hair. This is diagnostic of trichorexis nodosa. All right. So some more examples, real life scenarios, my own patients of trichoscopy. And uh, how about having a pause over here and just, you know, uh, start up with another presentation sometime later. You can have a pause over here. Uh, and then uh, you can revise, you can go through that presentation which I just delivered another time, revise your concepts and then the uh, coming up examples, the next part of the presentation is going to be some examples and I have not labeled those cases. So these are for you to come up with. Okay, so this is your own, uh, you know, uh, this is your own uh, diagnostic working of your mind how you go about those images. This is for your own practice. But anyhow. Assalamu alaikum everyone. So I'm going to talk about some more examples of hair fall from real life scenarios. Uh, in the last part of presentation, we talked about different types of alopecias. We talked in detail about different diagnostic features on trichoscopy. And um, probably, probably if you listen to that presentation, it would be quite easier for you to diagnose these upcoming examples of hair loss. And if you haven't gone through that presentation, I would suggest you open up that presentation on trichoscopy part one, and then you memorize or at least you revise or at least you go through the diagnostic features of different kinds of alopecia so that you can instantly diagnose these examples that I have just put. So my own patient came up with this uh, thinning on the scalp and what do you see on the trichoscopy? Giving you a moment, cook the diagnosis, okay, what was it? So this was example number one. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this disease? 
and then we can have discussion about it. Picture number two, young patient, whitish patch on the scalp and he, under, he underwent some treatments also. He was, I think, uh, 15 to 16 years of age and he underwent many treatments for alopecia areata and then he came to me and the picture was hilarious. I had to explain to the patient that there is no hope now. Probably you are not going to have your hair growing back from this uh, patch, bald patch. So what do you think about this example number two? Case number three. Case number three is also a patch of hair fall in the middle of the scalp and on trichoscopy you see these thin hair and the proximal hair are uh, whitish. Proximal part of most of the hair are whitish. But focus on the caliber of the hair in this picture and also the significance of this white area of the hair. All right, so what do you think about case number three? And then case number four, where there is also a patch of hair loss. And then on trichoscopy, the pigment that you see on clinical picture is enhanced in dermatoscopy or trichoscopy. You see these different uh, white dots, the empty follicles, pigmentation around the follicles, and this peripylar scaling. Okay. So, it appears like an inflammatory disorder. I've given you a clue. So, let me know what do you think about case number four. All right, case number five. Also, loss of hair from the middle of the scalp and on trichoscopy, lots and lots of globules and dots. Dots and uh, globules, dots and clots of pigmentation on the scalp with empty hair follicles, no follicles. Some of the hair follicles are having scaling in them and then focus on this, uh, the hair density is pretty much reduced. Also seems like an inflammatory disorder. Okay, another case, uh, I would label it as case number six. If I'm right, let me go through Okay, so case number six, patch of alopecia and then on trichoscopy, majority of the uh, follicles are showing black dots. So what is it? We have a detail about this. Case number six, what is it? All right, case number seven. You see these hair follicles. There is enlargement of the hair follicles. And then there is obviously pigmentation around on the skin. Can you see the blood vessels? I can see some erythema over here, but no particular blood vessels. Okay. So another patient with hair thinning on the top of the scalp and on trichoscopy, these hair. These are maybe coarse through hair, broken hair. So let me know what do you think about this case. This was case number eight. Case nine. What do you think about it? The scarred area with no hair follicles or hair probably as a result of some treatment that he might have taken. Case number 10, diffuse thinning of the hair. What do you see on trichoscopy? Case 11. The coiled hair. Case 12. All right. So, ये आप मुझे बताएंगे कि 12 cases में आपने क्या सोचा ताकि उसके ऊपर मैं भी दोबारा से अपना feedback दे सकूं. So recently, we have tried in collaboration with some people, IT people, we have come up with a solution that not everyone is good at dermoscopy or trichoscopy. But if even, even if you are not good at it, you can at least capture an image because capturing an image is very, uh, I mean, simple. 
it's quite simple you just put the scope on you put your phone on and then you can capture it's as easy as it seems so once you have captured the picture you don't know what exactly it is because sometimes we are not well versed with the trichoscopic or dermoscopic features of some disorders and then maybe we don't have time to go through all those features and the the mentor is not around uh, that we can always you know uh, send the picture and um, talk about the diagnosis so what you can do with ease uh, with very little time that you can put up the picture into a software this is skincheck pro a prototype of a uh, an application that we have just built with so much effort and resources uh, this app is already there on my youtube channel uh, with the name of ai uh, artificial intelligence in dermoscopy so if you browse uh, over here uh, this uh, this uh, i mean this window opens up when you the, when you touch that enabled link this window opens up and then when you uh, browse the files from here you can put up your picture of interest that you have just captured and you are worrying about the diagnosis of that picture once you feed that picture into the system it instantly comes up with its options of diagnosis like it takes maybe one or two seconds and then it um, gives you the options the diagnosis which uh, ai thinks are pertinent in this case to think you can always chat with the ai guy over here i mean you can ask what are the diagnostic features of this disease why not you talked about that disease in particular how much chances of improvement are there automatically if we don't go for treatment what treatment options are available can the patient wait for treatment or the, 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 there are chances of disease getting worse so these are the questions which you can ask uh with the ai on this uh, app if you have not yet gone through this app please open it up and see what it means to you and then let me know if you can really you know you we have trained this application on certain uh, on certain uh, disorders for example we have trained it on actinic keratosis basal cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma melanoma melanocytic nevi if you feed pictures related to these uh, disorders then it comes up with the related answers so humne isko abhi sirf itne hi disorders ke upar train kiya hai because we need thousands and thousands of images in order to train ai on some hair disorder or on some dermatological disorder we need so many pictures pertaining to one disease so we are working on it we are trying to train it on more and more uh, disorders related to dermoscopy and we are trying to build up another app on trichoscopic as well which you will see uh in future in coming future so this was all from my side related to trichoscopy hope the presentation was uh, understandable and you uh i mean you you understood most of the features that i talked about and uh, hopefully hopefully uh, after this presentation you will be able to diagnose common causes of alopecia on trichoscopy and you will be confidently diagnosing some disorders if at all you feel difficulty you feel free to come back to me you can send me the pictures and uh, you can uh, you know we have a, we could, we can have a discussion about the diagnosis so um, this is all from my side thank you so much for listening to the lecture to this presentation and you can always write up your comments in the comment section and jo maine aapko cases dikhaye 12 cases to unke bare mein bhi zarur bataye ki what do you think about diagnosis of those 12 cases from my side this is all thank you so much allah hafiz